This lesson explains in a simple way the basic operations that are performed when using the Aptra Finger A. We will look at the entire production workflow from shooting to final product in Adobe After Effects. The first lesson does not include moving the camera or the device, which will stand still in the frame. We will focus, therefore, on the relatively simple visual effects, in which we will only move the fingers but not the screen or the device. The later lessons will discuss much more complex sequences involving different methods for tracking the screen or the device. The purpose of this lesson is to show you how to make a shot where your iPad screen is framed and the user moves something using a finger on the screen. These movements will be used later in Adobe After Effects to show the contents of the display device in which the user, indeed, moves an object. Create a basic environment such as this one. The iPad almost completely fills the frame, but it's not perfectly centered and it's slightly rotated relative to the axis of the camera. For the purposes of this lesson, we recommend placing the camera on a tripod and not to move the iPad throughout the shoot. Set the information on the slate board as shown and set in FPS the number of frames per second in which we will record the shot. In our case, we shoot at 23.97 frames per second. Once everything is ready, fire up the camera and when it's running, tap on the top of the clapper. The recording starts. Place your finger on the surface of the iPad and move it as you wish, slowly, quickly, without any limit. When you have finished moving the finger, raise it and stop the recording by tapping the lower left corner of the display. And then stop the camera. On the iPad, the display will show the message that asks us to read the shot. If you're satisfied, tap Good. And then tap Send immediately. After a few moments, you should immediately get the email generated by TrackFinger AE. Open it and check that there is a text file with the tracking data. Meanwhile, TrackMirror AE has returned to the screen's late board. Touch back, and it will show the tracks page. Touch the tracks you just created. You will see the track length, in this case 30 seconds. Remember this value. Now, open Adobe After Effects and create a new project. Create a new comp and call it iPad Display. Use the settings for the composition 1024 by 768, 60 frames per second, and duration equal or greater than the length of the recording you just made inside the track finger A. In this case, 30 seconds. In this comp, create a new object. And rename it finger. Open your email application and then the email that has just arrived. Select the attachment and open it. Select all the contents of the text file and copy it. Return to Adobe After Effects, select the level null finger, go with the play add at the very first frame of the comp and then paste. When you expand the values of transformation, you will see that there are keyframes for position and opacity. If you keep the null layer selected, you will see the path of the null layer. This is the path that the finger has carried out in our recording. We will now import graphics of our comp, insert a background like this one. And then an object that moves with the movement of your finger. In our example, as an object that will be moving, we will use this image of a Polaroid photograph. To make sure that the photography follows the movement of the finger, we must tie the level of the photo to the finger parenting it. If we try to render the comp that we just created, we will see how the photography closely follows the movement of the finger. Given that the photo is linked to the finger but does not contain any position keyframe, you can move the photo as you want. The movements will always be linked and related to the ones of the finger. You can rotate, resize, move the photo, 
but the path that will follow will always be the same because it follows the path of the finger and there is no keyframe at this level. This thing gives you extreme freedom for the creation and layout of the graphics element of the comp. The use of new layers is essential because it allows you to separate graphics from the path. In this way you can change many characteristics of the level without ever intervening on the movements they make. Import now in Adobe After Effects the video you shot with the camera. Drag the video you just imported into the project icon that allows you to create a new comp. In this way, the comp that's created will have the same characteristics of the video that generated it, same resolution and same frame rate. In addition, the only level of this comp will be the video recorded by the camera. Now move the mouse in the comp for the duration of the comp itself until you find the frame where you press the clapboard. When you see the white flash, mark it with a marker. Ctrl plus 8. This is the time when you start the recording in Trackfinger AE, and therefore it is also the time instant in which to start the display of the iPad comp that you just created. Place in this comp the comp of the iPad display, making sure that the beginning of the level you inserted matches the marker that you have just made. For a simple test, resize this layer and move it into a corner so you can see both your fingers and the effect of the comp that contains the contents of the iPad display. Now play the comp in order to be sure that the time is synchronized. In this case there might be some discrepancies in the order of a few frames earlier or later we should not worry, move forward or backward the level with the iPad display until the movements of the photos are well synchronized with your finger. Okay. A certain amount of delay is due also to the mechanisms and software layers of the iPad itself. In fact, any interface reacts with a lack of 2 to 3 frames at least, and this in newer models. Older models of iPad have a delay of the order of 80 100 milliseconds, which translates into 5 to 6 frames. To be close to reality, we should keep this delay, but if you want to produce a very eye catching visual effect, we can overcome the limits of reality and reduce this delay to 1 to 2 frames or delete it altogether. For the purposes of this example, we will eliminate the delay completely, but we remind you that in reality, a lag between the movements of the fingers and the response of the interface actually is there. So if we want to create something very, very realistic, we have to leave the delay in our comp. At this point, we can distort the level with the Polaroid in order to adhere completely on the edge of the iPad frame in reality. Reset the size of the level to 100, then apply at this level the effect corner pin. Move the four corners in order to make them adhere perfectly to the edges of the iPad. At this point, you need to do the chroma key, so move the layer with the interface you just distorted in order to adhere to the screen of the device below the level of real shooting. It is beyond the scope of this series of lessons to deepen properly the extraction of key. You will still find many tutorials on the internet and explanation on how to get the perfect key in any condition. We will assume in this series of lessons that the key extraction is not a big deal and we will focus on other aspects of the compositing. Now try to play, render in the comp and see how the contents of the display reacts to the movement of the finger. If you're not satisfied, you can try to anticipate or delay the level of the display from the iPad of a few frames until you reach the desired result. Since the camera does not move and even the iPad does not move, the position of the display does not change during the duration of the shot and then you can anticipate or delay the level of the display without any problems. When the timing is satisfactory, go to the color correction of the iPad display. Since you have made this interface entirely in the digital domain, the image contrast will be perfect and the color absolutely ideal. But we must remember that when you use a real camera, shooting screen involves an exposure that is never optimal. 
The solution is therefore to dirt the image, make it less perfect in order to make it more realistic. We must therefore decrease the contrast and slightly change color curves so that they adhere better to the real ones. But you must be careful because you should not ruin the image too much if you produce a visual effect like this. It is because in practice shooting from real involves certain problems problems that do not allow optimal viewing of your device's display. We must therefore dirt it and make the image less perfect, but not overdoing it, because we will not achieve the desired result, which is to have simultaneously visible in the frame both the real world and the digital one inside the device display. Note the values for FPS for the comp with the iPad screen and the comp in which to achieve the visual effects generally differ. The comp with the tracking data of Trifinger AE is always at 60 frames per second, while the comp with the compositing has the same frame rate of the shot. This is normal because the final comp must have the same structure as the live action one, while to maintain the maximum fluidity of the movement within the screen, keyframes must still remain at 60 frames per second. For this first lesson, we finished. As you can see, it is a very simple example, even too much, but you have to consider this tutorial series as a different bricks that will be used to enhance your experience on the use of Trackfinger AE. Later, in the more advanced lessons, you will see how to put together different techniques in order to create much more complex animation and much more articulate and richer visual effects. Thank you.